Now, the infected blood inquiry has heard that two haemophiliacs lived with HIV for more than two years before doctors told them they had the virus. The patients had tested positive for HIV in 1984 after receiving a contaminated blood product made by the NHS in Scotland. Law reporter David Cowan has been listening to the inquiry this morning and joins us now. Dave, these two people then part of a large group who were infected in that way. Yes, um, in 1984, a total of 23 people who were being treated for haemophilia in Edinburgh uh, contracted HIV through a blood product called Factor 8. HIV, of course, can lead to AIDS. Um, And the Infected Blood Inquiry is examining this. It's been hearing evidence from Professor Christopher Ludlam, who was director at the Edinburgh Haemophilia Centre at the time. Um, The inquiry has been told that in 1983, it was known that 10 10 haemophiliacs in the United States had contracted AIDS through Factor 8. Five of them had died, but Professor Ludlam said that the the factor eight that was being given to his patients at the time came from donors in Scotland and there were no known cases of AIDS in the Scottish population back then, uh, so he thought it was safe. Uh, Late in 1984, however, he had samples from his patients tested without their knowledge and learned that some of them had been infected with HIV. Two months after that, uh, all of his patients were called to a meeting at Edinburgh Royal Infirmary uh, and were told this news in general terms. Um, Dr Ludlam uh, described what happened. We were very open about the situation, about uh, the testing and and particularly uh, that we had results that we would be happy to share with the patients if if they would like them. There was surprise and disappointment and they were perplexed and upset. That's my, my memory. I'm sorry, with passage of time, the detail has gone. That's the, 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 the feeling I have um, that I'm left with for, for the meeting. It was a difficult meeting. Um, but it was it was all handled in a, a very calm way. So, Dave, how were the patients actually told whether they had the virus? Well, this uh, is one of the major issues being examined by the inquiry, how that was handled. Um, Dr Ludlam says it was up, left up to the patients. They were told that if they wanted to know their test results, they could ask. Uh, he said most of the patients who were positive did contact the centre over the next few months and were told they had the virus, but a handful didn't. Uh, and it was more than two years before two of them were told. Uh, bear in mind, of course, that HIV is a virus, it's infectious, it can be spread through sexual contact. So these two people have been living for two years with HIV without knowing it or any of their family knowing it. Um, stepping away from the inquiry for a moment, let's listen to an interview from a BBC Scotland documentary which was broadcast in 2005. Um, you're going to hear from Robert Mackey. He was one of those two individuals and this is what he said about being given that news in 1987. Dr. Ludlam said that uh, you've been infected with HIV. Horrified, terrified, just shock. I knew it was deadly. I knew enough to know it was going to kill me. (laughs) My main concern then was for my wife. And And my son, my son. And going back to the inquiry, Professor Ludlam said there was another individual who specifically said he didn't want to know whether he had the virus or not. Um, After the the December meeting in 1984 with all the patients, the blood transfusion service started to heat treat the blood products in Scotland and no one else was infected after that. Now, um, of those 23 patients in Edinburgh, uh, we know that by 2011, 19 of them were dead uh, and AIDS and HIV had been a factor in 14 of their deaths. Robert Mackey who you just heard from there, uh, is one of the last who's still alive. Um, This didn't just happen in Edinburgh, of course. Across the UK, about 2,400 people died after being infected with HIV and hepatitis C through blood products in the 1970s and 80s. David Cowan, thanks for that.